You guys remember Klein Entertainment? You know, the masterminds behind Don't Starve and Oxygen Not Included? Well, what if I told you that they somehow managed to take the twisted love child of Tim Burton and Mother Nature and turn it into a video game? Don't believe me? Then check this out. Believe me now? Good. Because Rotwood is an absolute masterpiece, from the incredible artwork and style all the way down to the combat and gameplay. So if you're ready to embrace the bizarre, then strap in, because the only thing stranger than the weird enemies and goofy characters is the fact that you won't be able to stop playing. <laughs> Klein Entertainment first announced Rotwood on a PC gaming show back in 2022 with their incredibly memorable announcement trailer. The reason it was so memorable is predominantly because of how absolutely goofy it looked. From first glance, you see some interesting looking characters battling an onion? From that point on, everyone started thinking to themselves, No way they're fighting an onion, right? Wrong. And it only gets weirder from there. In the same trailer, it shows these interesting characters beating up anteaters, bullfrogs, a giant tree, and whatever the hell this thing is. All while displaying multiple different weapons and hinting that there is some sort of armor system. Oh. Did I mention this was all done in less than 30 seconds? So like I said before, with their incredibly memorable announcement trailer. And if you disagree, then... You weird, buddy. But before I get ahead of myself, let's backtrack a little. <laughs> Klein Entertainment is a relatively small studio based out of Vancouver, Canada. They are most known for development of their games Don't Starve, Oxygen Not Included, and Grifflins. All wildly popular titles. So when they announced a new title, you can imagine the community got a little excited. So excited! So excited! Now, after the announcement trailer in 2022, the developers didn't really release any information on the game. There were no information updates, timeline updates, or release updates. Hell, they didn't even have any delay updates for the community. They kind of just let the hype of the game slowly fade away. Until June 9th, 2023. After an entire year of silence, they finally released their first piece of information, which unsurprisingly turned out to be a playtest. For those of you that are confused on why this isn't surprising, let me explain. Klein Entertainment prides themselves on the communication and engagement that they have with their community. Yeah, yeah, I understand how that's contradictory to what I was saying just a minute ago, but hear me out. On all their games, they release multiple playtests that allow a majority of their community the chance to play pre-launch. This allows them to hear the feedback from the community so they can actually fix and change the game to better suit the player. If only some incredibly popular titles that came out every year would do something like this. After three playtests, a demo, and two years of waiting, Rotwood released an early access on April 24th, 2024. And oh my god, is it amazing. So remember how I mentioned a few of the enemies a little earlier? Anteaters, bullfrogs, a giant tree, and whatever the hell this thing is. Well, that's only the start of what makes this game amazing. From broad things like the different mechanics in the game, all the way down to specific things like the different weapons you can use in combat, this game is on its way to being something great. If you took the base building from Cult of the Lamb, the action from Hades, and the goofy looking art style from Castle Crashers, you'd end up with Rotwood. Let's start with the base building. Now, for those of you that have played Cult of the Lamb, I already know what you're thinking. This is nothing like that. It's so unrefined and has no colony aesthetics. I get it and understand. However, if you could leave your comments in the bin, I'd be more than happy to get back to you. Anyways, now that all the nerds are out of the way, let me get back to what I was saying. In Cult of the Lamp, you have a base that you occupy before starting a run that you can build at, increase your population at, and more importantly, that's where you have all your meta progression. While Rotwood is not nearly as refined, it more or less has the same elements. Before starting a run, you're at your base in this area where you're able to build things. The difference between the two is that Rotwood's building is focused predominantly on cosmetic changes, but the game is still in early access, so that could change in the future. This same base also just so happens to be where all your meta progression is. You can change armor here, you can change and upgrade your weapons here, you can complete your challenges here, and so on and so forth. The only real difference between the two is that Rotwood doesn't have the, uh, religious followers like Cult of the Lamb. Now, don't get it twisted. Just because I'm comparing the two does not mean that I believe they're the same thing. It's just the best comparison I can make from the current state Rotwood is in at the time of recording. This is, however, a compliment to the highest degree. I've beaten just about everything there is to beat in Cult of the Lamb, and I've done the exact same thing with Rotwood. So far, there are only four bosses, four mini-bosses, and four different zones you can go into. So, not that much content. But at the same time, it actually is a lot of content. Every level has four different difficulty levels that allow the player to have a harder challenge while trying to find the store in order to purchase new weapons and armor. 
Funnily enough, this actually leads us into the next gameplay mechanic, the action roguelike part. Again, for any of you that have uh, comments about my comparison with Hades, here's the bin, so go ahead and put them in there. The reason I made the Hades comparison rather than just sticking with Cult of the Lamb is because I do not want everyone to think I'm claiming Rotwood is a Cult of the Lamb clone, because it most definitely isn't. While doing runs in Rotwood, you have a choice between four different weapon types. You'll never guess what this is similar to, Hades. Anyways, you choose your weapon and head into the wilderness. For the majority of my time playing the game, I use the two ball looking things, and let me tell you, this is probably the most amount of fun I've had on a roguelike in an incredibly long time. Like, look at this combo. It's fucking sick. But it's not just this weapon. All the different weapon types sort of have a combo. Like, check out what you can do with the spear. On top of the weapons, you also have an armor system. As of right now, this is incredibly bare bones as there aren't many different types of armor in the game, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Primarily for the fact that all armor and weapons have different weight. You know, for the different build types you can have in the game. Oh wait, did I not mention that? There are three different build types, light, medium, and heavy. The weight class directly affects your dodge and speed in the game. With the light class, you're able to quickly dash, whereas the heavy class has a much slower roll. Pretty straightforward. However, depending on the enemies you're facing, it could change a lot. The enemies in Rotwood are definitely different. I mean, it's not every day I get to beat up on an onion and turn up just for the heck of it. On top of the base enemies, the bosses are just as weird. Like, somehow you go from fighting a giant tree to a musician? All of this combined makes Rotwood one of my favorite roguelikes. It somehow managed to perfectly capture elements from other wildly successful titles in the same space and turn it into a unique experience that just makes me want to keep playing. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, because outside of just the gameplay mechanics, the artwork is hilariously amazing. Quick side note, right now Rotwood is sitting at mixed reviews on Steam, so I decided to scroll through them to try and see what people didn't like about the game. Weirdly enough, the most common issue I found was actually in Chinese, so I had no idea what it said. But outside of that, it was people actually saying the game was too hard. This has got to be the most childish thing I have ever seen someone complain about. You're literally throwing a temper tantrum because you suck. LOSER! YOU'RE A LOSER! So, I'm gonna leave you with the same thing the entire Dark Souls community says to players who say the games are bad. Get good. Now, moving into the artwork, I compared it to something like Castle Crashers primarily for the reason of how weird and goofy it looks. This is in no way a bash on the game either. I absolutely love how the game looks. I also made a video on how I love Castle Crashers, so check that out. Everything from the character creation, to the enemies, to the attacks, the game looks absolutely phenomenal. It keeps with the common theme of client entertainment as they usually have a comic-esque cartoony looking art style that allow the player to just sit back and relax and have a good time, rather than be smacked in the face with bloom, ray tracing, and a way too realistic dinosaur. Even with the wacky weapons and combat, and the goofy looking art style of the game, the developers somehow managed to make a fairly serious story. Even though it might not be finished yet, it's already showing the proper marks of being an absolute banger. Now, since the game is in early access, we don't have the full story, but here's what we do know so far. Before the world fell to the rot, there were cities powered by this thing called a wellspring, which kept the city safe from the rot infestation. In order to charge the wellspring, they would use teramines to manufacture tool rods to keep them powered. However, one day, the wellsprings began to fail and the production that was once provided was no longer there, which leads us to where we are in the game. We have a small little outpost set up around the last remaining wellspring. The only issue is that it's not powered. So under the guidance of Flit, we learn about the heart crystals and how that's what we're going to use to power it. Flit is the grandson of the guy who created the wellsprings, but that's like no big deal. Oh, sorry, I meant to say that he's the only person remaining who actually knows how to get the wellspring to be operational again. Which, funnily enough, actually turned out to be the whole goal of the game. The goal is to get enough heart crystals so that we can activate the bubble shield on the wellspring so that people have somewhere safe to go. This is actually all we currently know since the game was released in early access. Now, the story is pretty run of the mill, civilization gets overrun by an enemy, then the survivors that are left want to try and take it back. Pretty standard. However, since the games are not completed yet, the door is still open to a ton of possibilities. And with Clyde Entertainment's track record, I'm incredibly excited to see what they do with it. I mean, they could have a more serious storyline like they did with Don't Starve, or they could just take it completely off the rail and have the game end with some crazy scene like they did in the game like Castle Crashers. We'll just have to wait and find out. All in all, Rotwood stands as a testament to Clyde Entertainment's creativity and decision to craft game experiences like no other. They somehow managed to capture an audience over multiple games, and they've done it yet again. As players embark on their journey through the world of Rotwood, they will experience a new fun in gaming that they haven't had since like 2016. Even though it's an early access, it still shows all the marks of being a standout game in one of the most competitive genres currently in the gaming circle. I'm incredibly excited to see what they'll do next, and you should be too. Anyways guys, I just wanted to hop on here and say that if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a sub. Right now, we're working towards our 500 sub goal, and any support is greatly appreciated. I'm going to keep working on videos to get out for you all to enjoy, so until then, I'll see you next time.